Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Okay, I've finished my two uh, hair ears. So I just wanted to show you what I've done. And it sort of has made me think about something I'm going to do prior to constructing his body and his legs and feet. And that's prepare some of these decorative elements. I think they're a lot easier to stitch and embellish when they're just loose in my hand than being on the side of a rabbit. I think if you're just putting patches of fabric on your rabbit and whip stitching them on, not a problem. But if you wanted to do something a little bit more decorative, I think preparing these pieces um, before with all the little bits of stitching and beads and things would be a lot easier. So I'll show you what I've done here. The first ear, I just had the one piece of fabric. I've now, um, I, I stitched it onto the brown linen and then with the insert inside the wired ear of calico, it's in between the two sandwiched with a running stitch around the outer edge. So the um, the the other set of ears I showed you in the previous video, I whip stitched around the outer edge. This one, I just did a running stitch. So the red was stitched on first to the linen, and then I joined the linen to the hessian with a running stitch once I'd finished doing an embellishment. Now the embellishment is a little logo I found on some fabric. I've stitched on some cheesecloth, a little bit of the old uh, lace doily, some beads and some cross stitch on a little patch of fabric which comes from the second ear. So it sort of ties it all together. The little doily that I've been using, this very old thing, is... Um, yeah, very tattered and falling to bits, but there's all sorts of little bits and pieces in there that I can pinch out and use on the rabbit. So that will be a lot of fun to use. I've also gone through the entire piece and seed stitched in cream thread right through on the cream part. I'll bring it up to the camera and you can see all the little stitches. It didn't take too long, but it is tedious. It's probably not necessary, but I was watching a movie and I just started and away I went from there. So it just adds a bit of texture to the piece. So I'm really pleased with the way that come up. Now the second ear is very decorative. So as you can see, I've gone through and outlined as much of the flower as I could and then started embellishing. So I've used a soft pink on the inside of each petal. I've then cut a little petal out of the fabric. Now, if we have a look at this ear, see that little leaf in there, that little one there? I've cut him out, five of them, and I've stitched them into the center because there was that sort of shape in the center of that um, flower anyway. Then I've popped some little beads. I've then added beads around up the top here to this little one. That's lace from the doily and then a couple pistol stitches. By popping that red in there sort of helps tie it into the branch. Little piece there, little bit of Appleton wool to create my stem um, and then some more little elements of lace with some little French knots. And here's the X's going through the check fabric, just like when we were kids and we would stitch gingham at school and do cross stitch. It sort of brought back a few memories and I've just got the red and the cream drifting up that one side and popping out the top here. Hence why I did that over here as well, just to sort of tie it all together. So they are completed. And um, yeah, like I said, I want to prepare some elements so that they are easy to just attach to my hair when um, I need them. So I've cut out of some fabric some script. This is just some little pieces that I thought I might use on my uh, hair. And what I might do is pop some calico behind these. And then what I'll do is do maybe some blanket stitch, some seed stitch, just be a case of doing anything decorative that I'd like just to sort of have it ready to go to patch onto my, my hair. So for example, that would just sit on there. That'll just give that fabric a little bit of support. I'll come through and I'll probably do a running stitch around the outer edge and then I'll probably seed stitch through as well. And then it can be trimmed back so that calico disappears and it'll be out of sight, and then it's ready to whip stitch as a patch on the side of the hair. So that's one I'll definitely embellish a little. 
I might even do this one here just to have it ready to go. Um, that's not very interesting, that piece. These little guys here definitely could have some work done on them. So it's just a case of popping them on the fabric. It'll be nice to have them ready to go. And if I decided to do some embroidery, for example, let's say, I just had a little idea. Let's say I um, do a little piece of floral. I guess it's all about making it feel like it's all connected. So little elements come out of the design and appear on other elements. So that could be done in red, red stitching and that'll just tie that little one together. This little guy too, we'll just pin him on there. He can have some embroidery. So that one there, we might do something a little bit bigger. I don't know, we might, let's have a look at some of our artwork here and see if we can just get some inspiration. I'm sort of looking up here at this piece. Maybe we can, do a bit of a, a leafy pattern. This is just a rough sketch, but it'll give me an idea. So when I come to sit down to do this, something's already sketched. And then as I use my needle and thread, I can fine tune the design to make sure it looks So I do, I, I find too, once you start sort of sketching in the style that you've got, I'm going to say your feature piece like this, this here, you start to get a feel for what the artist has sort of done. And so you can sort of do some little, little elements to help sort of tie it all together. go some little lazy daisy stitches it's going to be so handy having this pre-done it'll make cladding of the rabbit really easy so if you can see that so I've just done a little sketch in there that will look pretty just stitched and then I've got that little one there so that should be good so I'll just put that aside. I also found these labels. I think they've got potential too of embellishing. So we might pop a couple of those on the calico and um, use them. I'll just cut this red one out. Oh, I think maybe the brown one. I think I might have enough red on the, the hair with all of that fabric. Maybe I'll look for things that are slightly different in color. So I might grab this chocolate colored one I think he will be a bit of a contrast and that can just be pinned onto there so like I said I can do some running stitch around it and just sort of you know start embellishing it and it'll be great I can just pick it up and pop it on the hair so that's some little projects there now the main piece here I want to actually separate out some of these elements and get them ready. So I just started sort of drawing a cut line around here, having a think about where I can cut it to bring that piece out. I'm not too worried if there's like a random stem that I'm severing off the leaf component. Because I can always add that lace doily in on those sorts of areas. What I mean by that is see where that joins there. I've got to cut through there. I might even cut a little higher. I'll 
come up through there so that I'm not too close to that. And then what I'll do is lay this element onto some calico and then it too can be stitched, embellished, beaded. And it's gonna be a lot easier on me because I'm not having to wrestle the body of a, a hair. So I think this will be well worth the prep time. And it's gonna be so good to have these little pieces all decorated and ready to go. What fun. So I guess this episode is all about preparing some of your decorative little pieces. And even if you don't have this panel, grab your calico, grab a adult colouring in book and just have a look for some images that are floral and sketch a few squiggly lines onto your calico and then stitch them with some embroidery thread, grab some beads. Oops. I feel so much better now that I've made the chop into this piece. I was like precious about it and I don't know why, because now it's cut, it's open slather. <laughs> By putting this onto calico too, see it's so floppy to embroider that, embroider that, it's going to make it a little bit difficult in your hands. It's um, going to be flopping around the place. And it'll stabilise it. You could then put it in a hoop. If you find that your handiwork is a little bit tight and it's sort of pulling everything, you could pop your work into a hoop and then do your embroidering or your collaging. That's a beautiful big piece. And even that, if I wanted to, I could separate it again there. But he is a pretty big rabbit, so I'm not too worried about that at this stage. What I might do is when I embroider it, I'll leave this space here free. So if I decide to cut through there, I can. But if I um, want to use it in its entirety, I can just do a couple little stitches sort of to finish off. So I might leave that um, blank. I'll just do a, a circle in there with this pen just to sort of remind myself to stay away from that area because it could get divided even more. But that's at least a start. Let's see what other elements we can pull out of here. Definitely that one. And at the end of the day, if I don't use all of these pieces, it won't matter because, you know, they're going to be handy maybe to do a feature in um, a slow stitch piece for my Journal of Stitchery project. So I'm just now going to fussy cut this little guy out. This is just going to be the gift that keeps giving. So if you manage to find a doily that um, hasn't been completed, that would be perfect too. You could probably find all sorts of little elements in an old doily that, you know, the ones we used to embroider to make duchess sets. Grab that out and let's cut it up because it's usually on beautiful linen and it can be Just to help with the protection of the fabric too, I'm going to go around that outer edge with some art glitter glue. You could use um, fray, check, fray Check, I think it is. That'll just stop it from um, fraying. Because the more you handle linen, the more it just will unravel, which you don't want. So this will just protect Protect the edge a little. 
So there's plenty of work here, just fiddling around with these pieces. This is probably my favorite, just embellishing, collaging, looking at the design, what can I add to it? Where can I add some fabric? Where can I add some beads? And just I'm off camera. Okay. So that will just keep it nice. Now what I might do is seeing that's a little damp, let's grab that piece of calico. I think it'll fit. And let's just pop that on there. That'll help it as well maintain a little structure. That's not going to go anywhere. So that'll avoid having to use pins now because it's just going to tack down there nicely. So that's ready now to do some embellishing. That's going to be fun. Gosh, when you start looking at the design where you could bring in fabric and beads and yeah. Very pretty. So those are ready. Let's have a look at our panel again and see what else we can pinch out of here. I think I'm gonna need some smaller elements. That's a big one there. That's a small one, that's a small one. I might. The good thing about using this heat friction pen is that once I apply the iron, it disappears. The lines all disappear. So you can sort of scribble all you like. That's pretty good. So that that's going to be a big one. There's a little one there. That's great because I'd like some little little elements. And that one there is another little one. And like I said, and see where that ends. Just for some reason, just ends. I could either put a little petal on the end or add some lace to that. So they, they're great. So let's cut out these now. I'll leave a little extra fabric around that end so that if I did put a rosette there of lace from that old doily, I've just got a little bit of linen to work with. This is a bit tight through here, but that's okay. We should be able to sneak through. And I'll leave a little extra meat up there on that fabric so that I've got somewhere to pop a flower of lace. And I'll do the same there as well. I can always trim it off if it's not needed. At the end of the day, the piece might be trimmed, you know, even more, depending on where it'll fit on the, the hair. It certainly is going to be fun piecing him together, having all these little pretty embellished elements. But you might find a fabric that you have in your stash that has line drawings of flowers or, or shapes that can be embellished too. Maybe grab a couple pieces of that and embellish it similar to your, um, your other elements. So it sort of ties it all together. Let's do that big one now.
I think the more time you spend getting these things ready, the more you're going to enjoy the construction of your hair because you'll literally have them all lying in front of you, all your patches and your bits and pieces, and then away you go, and it's, oh, it's going to be great. This is going to be worth the, the effort, I think. Now, I've only selected two different beads. I have heaps of reds and creams and I could have gone crazy, but I thought, no, I'm just going to, there we go. That's a nice piece, but it is big. So it might be another scenario where I leave this zone here free and just do this little bit, this little bit. So I've got some little elements. Yeah, I'd say I could easily cut those two off and that would still be a nice big piece just by snipping. I'm going to snip them off. I'm going to do it. Because he's, I know he's a big boy, but there's only so much of him. Yeah, that still looks great. Yeah, I like that. And now I've got a couple more little pieces. I might leave it together for now. It'll just be easier to stabilize it on fabric and I can always separate it even more. Now, what have we got here? Um, I'm gonna cut that through there and pinch off this little piece. I'll get rid of that one first. I'm concentrating, that's why I'm not talking. I'm trying to cut on the lines. Harder than, harder than what you think. Okay. Whip around there. Yeah. And I'm going to separate that, I'd say. But we'll leave it for now because maybe a long piece might be handy. You know, I, I sort of need all sizes. I don't want to be heaps of little pieces and heaps of big pieces you sort of need a bit of a mix okay and like I said if I don't use all these elements won't they just be the best to have in your stash just to grab to decorate something could go on a journal cover could create a page based on those elements in your journal of stitchery if you're not doing that project um, and you haven't heard about it go and have a look for the Roxy Creations journal of stitchery project because oh, there's some great great ideas for just random embroidery I'm just going to grab my calico and um, attach some of these pieces so it's still here on the bolt of fabric so which is fine grab those so we've already attached the one so that can go there and let's have a play with this now so once again just going to go around that edge which will oh gosh around that edge to help it from not fraying.
sorry, I'm concentrating. <laughs> so the embroidery itself, I'm using a combination of that perle crochet cotton, the red, and a cream. But the pink, I didn't have anything similar, so I've had to use DMC stranded cotton. And I think I'm using three strands. I've broken that down because it is six strands in the, there we go. There's six strands in DMC stranded cotton. So the, the three was more than enough to um, give me what I needed to embroider the pink. And as for the little elements that I cut out of the fabric, those little leaves, I did a similar thing to what I'm doing here. I found the leaves that I wanted, just trimmed them out, leaving a little of the cream fabric that was behind the, the red so that it wasn't, you know, cut right on the edge of the leaf. So I left a little bit of cream. And then um, using the art glitter glue, once again, just edged it like I am here. That stops the fraying, it tacked it down. And then I just did some little stitches around the edge of it to make sure that it didn't go anywhere. Not that it probably would with a bit, bit of art glitter glue. I've got way too much glue coming out here. That's all right. That at least will stay where it's meant to. All right, so let's flip him over. Let's pop him down. Oh, got glue everywhere. You unblock it and then it's too much. It's blocked and it's not enough. So once again, I could have used my glue stick as well. My um, blue glue stick would have held this nicely. But because the fabric's linen, I tend to find that as I drag that glue stick to the edge of the cutout piece, it just starts breaking down that little edge and fraying it. So this is more direct, more whoop, cotton everywhere. So even once these are embroidered, I'll probably leave them on this big piece until I need them. I can then fussy cut them out again, if that makes sense. They won't get lost. They'll be all together. Oh, a little bit more over here. No need to rush, Corinne. Do it properly. Just finished a coffee and I can feel it surging through me. Like I want to run. There we go. And then all I need to do now is cut this piece of fabric off of my roll. But you could use anything as your backing fabric. If you've got some old fabric that you're just sick of looking at and it's a, a colour that won't show through and will just disappear behind your piece you can by all means use that to stabilize your work Ugh. okay maybe this big one next Hours of fun here, embroidering this. Hours of fun. I'd say I'll be back in a week. That's how long it'll take me to fiddle around with this project. Then I can show you, show you the finished product. And I say, would say we can then start wrapping some wire and maybe build the legs and arms start getting some stuffing into him and his body. What fun. There's a little bit of work to do around his nose. We're going to need 
to sort of add some stuffing to the external part of the body around that nose muzzle region to get little jowls and cheeks happening. So that'll be a bit of fun. But in the meantime, I'm going to focus on getting my elements ready. Well, they say don't put the horse before the cart. And this is what this is about, getting these pieces ready. So I've got two more. They should fit nicely there. This is going to give me heaps. I, I'd be surprised if I use all these. Maybe I can even put one on the back of the ears because they're just hessian undecorated at the moment. There might be something left over that could go on the reverse side of the ear. would be pretty cute. One left. And he'll fit there nicely. Am I even on camera? Sorry, guys. Yeah, that should fit there. Once again, right around the outside. Gee, from that one panel, I've got quite a few elements. So I've already used one on the ear. Around we go. That's it. That's it. Beautiful. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one already on the ear. So that's nine pieces. And as I said, I can see spots where I could trim this back a little bit more. I'll just show you my beads while I'll just let that sit for a moment before I fiddle too much and it pops up because I want to cut it out next. Um, these are the little little six mil pearl like beads but they got a bit of a calico color and these are the little red ones i decided to go for a matte one so that he wasn't too glamorous but who knows i might get in amongst all this and pull in some red shiny beads who knows no promises anything could happen all right so i'm just going to fold that fabric out grab my scissors thread caught there and just cut that down. Okay. Oh, I've actually got one piece over here as well. So that's 10. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One on the ear. No, goodness, I can't count. Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. There we go. So now I can work on those, matching them to that, and then they'll be ready to go. And in addition to the project, I can do some slow stitching on these little pieces, just for something a little bit different. And what was the other one I picked up? Oh, yeah, these. So I might even add them in amongst it as well. And even if, I, like I said, I don't use them, um, won't matter. They're ready to go. And I sort of tend to follow the same sort of colour schemes. So to have that just seed stitched, ready to sort of 
play with won't be a bad thing and those as well okay guys um i think that's all i wanted to show you oh i will grab those green ears i just wanted to show you remind you the finished edge won't be a second okay so if you recall i did those ears see the whip stitch around the outer edge versus the running stitch and of course those ears were identical bar the lace of course so same same but different okay now in amongst the pile of goodies for this rabbit i've got an old doily that was never stitched so this has potential to be embellished um i've also got no that's it that's no i did cut out oh i know what i cut out i cut out um a rose sorry i'm just gonna take your camera up a bit this is my journal of stitchery one of the projects and i've got this piece of rose from a um a duchess set so i've cut that out and i'd really like to do something with that and i had plans for the rabbit but i'm like no that's that's a feature piece in itself so i'm thinking of finding a page in my journal stitchery that i can add you know the rose to it so that's another little project another day and i've just tucked it in there so that i'm like well that was an idea it can stay in there it's nice and safe and like i said if you have a look at um the um, playlist journal of stitchery roxy's journal of stitchery you'll find all my projects that i've done over the last 12 months you'll find then if you do hashtag journal of stitchery you will find um everyone around the world that's been doing this project with the roxy girls Rachel and Sarah that's um that's another one of my books with different projects in it from the very start of the actual program so heaps and heaps of fun to be had just in that that um project if you're late to the party by all means join in because they're great fun and of course um we did a Christmas as well so a Christmas themed journal of stitchery all right so mr green bunny he's packed to one side he'll get some work one day one day soon mr red bunny he's got a plan of action his ears are at least done so it's just all about embellishing these pieces which is fun in itself so i've got my beads the wool i use for the stem just to put a pop of green through was appleton wool and then what's in my little basket here there was, um, that's the pink embroidery cotton, number 760. So that, and then I've got little bits and pieces I can cut out as well to embellish. So everything's packed in a little box. All of that can go in there now, and I'm ready to pick it up and go stitching. Okay, everyone, I will leave you all alone now. Thank you for joining me, and um, I hope your Henriks are coming along nicely. See you in the next video. Bye for now.